I did the cliche, went on a yoga retreat um, and met this teacher who was really inspiring and just was really vulnerable and open. And I was like, wow, I don't think I've ever had these kind of conversations before with myself and asking, you know, like, what, what is it that I really want and, and what, like, what makes me happy? That was Maud Hurst. Hey everyone, Danny Pomploon, and welcome back to the Yogi Misfit Sessions. Today is our Fierce Calm collaboration, one of my favorite episodes to do. Uh, these stories are so incredible, and they're just so inspiring, and, and uh, Fierce Calm just does amazing work over there. So hi to the team over, over at Fierce Calm, hope you guys are doing well. Maud came on the show, and she's got a really cool story. She was a past um, actor or actress, as she said, or actor, actress, I forgot which, which terminology we used there. Um, but um, yeah, she did that for quite a while and found that her life was not going as well as she thought it would and turned to meditation and yoga. And it's now brought her to this space where she's sharing that with everybody. So thanks, Maude, for coming on the show. We can't wait to, uh, to let our listeners hear it. Um, quick uh, heads up for everybody. If you want to support the show, we've got our support page up. There's a ton of free giveaways on there, and it really just helps us get these conversations out there to, uh, to everybody. Um, yeah, and uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Enjoy the show, and uh, thanks, Maude Hurst. Hey, Maude. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I think it's so cool to uh, to to have these stories with fierce. I think I say this every time I do a fierce calm story, but I pretty much like really do love uh, to bring guests on the show in this type of way um, because one, it talks to the vulnerability of a human being, and it shows other people that it's totally fine and more than acceptable and more than okay to be vulnerable. And two, it's just so interesting people's stories and how yoga, mindfulness, and whatever has like you. Some of the stories that we've had on here, like yoga, has come into people's lives when they were going through it. So I'm excited to have you on the show. Well, thank you for having me, and I totally agree that the, I mean, my whole yoga journey has been this: the um, creating space where people can share their vulnerability and realize that it's actually really empowering when you do, and it's terrifying in the real world to share this stuff, and then you do mm-hmm. it, and you suddenly feel like hey, we actually are all the same. And we all kind of obviously have had a different journey and a different Mm -hmm. hard time, but we've all dealt with shit in our lives. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on here, but we've all- You can say all the first words you want. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we've all gone through stuff and and actually at the center of it, we all just want to be loved and heard and seen. And um, for me, yoga has been that platform in order to um, feel that for myself. And so I'm really excited to share. I was reading some of Brene's Brown, uh, Brene Brown's book, um, or well, listening to it anyway, on a plane ride coming from India. So I had plenty of time. But one of the things that she said that like stuck out, we know this stuff, but like everybody feels shame. Mm. Everyone feels shame. Everyone feels fear. Everyone feels, you know, all the things that we're not supposed to talk about or people don't want to talk about because it makes you uh, less of a whatever, a man or a woman, or, you know, just less of a a this, and that's not what society wants to see. And yet everyone wants to have the conversation about their feelings, about how they're really doing versus the, you all right, you know, and then we just call it a day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Uh, she's amazing. And I think like, everyone should read all of her stuff, because that is that just to realize that we all feel that and if we can call it, and you can be the first person in the room, for example, right now, like I have, I know I've come on here to share my story and I, that excites me, but I'm still scared. Like the human experience is to have that fear and has, is to have the, this like a feel the fear and do it anyway, which is what I always kind of say to myself. It's like just yeah. the thing that you don't necessarily want to do probably is what people need to hear and what you need to share to connect with people on a deeper level. Should we take a deep breath together? Yes, let's do okay. it. Okay. And those of you listening too, you should do this with us. But if you're driving, don't do it. <laughs> well, like, don't close your eyes and do it. All right. So wherever you're at, me and Maud and you, those of you listening to the show right now, just take a nice tall seat. We'll close the eyes. And we'll have this intention of stepping into our, our strength in vulnerability. This intention of speaking our divine truth. 
and this intention of just being exactly who we are today. We'll inhale and exhale. All right. We are here, Mod. We're here for you and we're here for your vulnerability. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> all right. So let's hear, I want to hear all about your story. What was it like before you found yoga and meditation? And I want to talk about all the cool things that you're doing with it at some point too, but let's talk about your story and what it was like before yoga and meditation. Wow. Well, before I um, was raised by a single mom um, who is incredible, but um, definitely had some um issues kind of growing up around trusting men and then um from a young age started performing and I didn't really put the two together until kind of later in my life but I always felt like this need to uh, be loved I guess we always have that but um I found performing and I became an actress um or an actor depending how you want to say it and mm -hmm. um I went to drama school quite young and then um started working from the age of 18 professionally in TV shows. Um, and I loved it. I really thought that like I had found my thing and I felt like, um, I was being seen and I felt that I finally was being recognized as the person I was. And then 10 years into my acting career, I suddenly was like, I don't know if I'm that happy. And I, I had all the things that I thought I wanted. I was in a big TV show at the time. Um, and I then got into a relationship um, and again, thought it was everything that I always wanted. And we had like planned our future and we bought a house together. And then that relationship um, broke down. He cheated on me and I had to sell my house and went from thinking I had everything. I'd just come out of the show and I thought like, I'm going to be in every big TV show from this point on, everything felt like I was on this kind of uphill thing. And then the breakup happened and I had to just have a moment where I took a breath and I was like, I have two choices. I either at this point repeat these patterns because they kept coming up, meeting the kind of bad guy and meeting mm. something that kind of was um, a representation of, um, I guess, my dad, that I'd like repeated these patterns of behavior and I was going to meet somebody or I was scared of commitment. So I'd always kind of self-destruct at some point. Or, <laughs> Don't we all know that story? <laughs> yeah. um, and um, and I then I was like, actually, I think, or the other path is I need to find out what makes me actually happy because I had all of this stuff that I thought, on paper would have made me happy. And there was some part of me that just was still wanting something else. Like it didn't feel right. There was something missing. And, um, I did the cliche, went on a yoga retreat, um, and met this teacher who was really inspiring and just was really vulnerable and open. And I was like, wow, I don't think I've ever had these kind of conversations before with myself and asking, mm -hmm. you know, like what, what is it that I really want? And, and what, like, what makes me happy? Um, and I then realized that my life, my whole life, even the acting was all about hiding behind scripts, hiding behind cameras, hiding behind um, a character, which felt so right at the time, but I suddenly was aware. And I just, I don't know, this mask had been taken off. And I was like, oh, that was not me. That was like the me shielding myself from me. And I have an opportunity now to reveal myself and it was terrifying but that's kind of where I got to and I was like I'm gonna take this path and yeah that was how I kind of that was my life pre-yoga and how did you actually get into yoga and mindful did it kind of fall into your lap was it something you were looking for no I wasn't looking for it at all so I went to that yoga retreat and met mm -hmm. um, the teacher and she as I said, she re just really inspired me and just hit some buttons and was asking questions that I hadn't asked myself. And mm -hmm. um, then I just said, like, where did you train? Like, how did you become this level of openness with yourself and this confident? Right. And um, she had trained with um, Dylan Ayalu, this guy, and, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to research a little bit into that. I hadn't thought about doing a training, but I thought, well, maybe not to teach just to do the training would be a really good way to, for me to kind of take the next step and as an actor you're always either working or not working and I had a period of not working so I was like this is this is kind of a perfect opportunity and um I you know I'd sold my house I was literally at a, a part like a crossroads in my life and I felt like I had nothing to lose so I was like I'm just going to book on 
didn't really ask many questions, didn't even research other trainings. I just was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this one. Um, yeah, that was how, how I kind of found it. Did you start teaching right away and just get kind of like diving in full force or was it something that was like integrated slowly or? So the training that I went on, um, I, I think I mentioned I didn't do much research into it, but it was, um, hugely about transformation and um I mean a lot about yoga teaching obviously and and I learned to um to be a very confident teacher which was amazing during the training but um it was about like digging into myself and um for three and a half weeks intensively oh no it wasn't it was five spread over five weeks um looking at all of that stuff and um I had this huge shift when I realized so much about myself and um I started teaching straight away and I, I went in not wanting to teach particularly and just wanting to have those kind of transformation, but seeing what it did for me and seeing the change that I had in those five weeks, I was like, I need to share this message and I need to share transformation with people. And I need to let people know that there's, um, there are other questions they can be asking themselves. Um, yeah. So I did start, I just jumped straight in. I kind of like, I remember when I first took my first yoga class, I was like, I don't know if this was for me. And then I did teacher training and was like, I still don't know if this is for me. And now I look back and I'm like, this is my life's work. <laughs> what else would I do without it? <laughs> Definitely. And and it also leads to, you know, it's, I'm sure you feel the same, but you do that step and then you suddenly get opened up to this mind field of like, I mean, it's like, opening our eyes to a whole different universe and every direction I step there's another lesson to learn and there's another uh, practice that I can learn and, and my training was um, primarily medita- uh, yoga but there was lots of meditation and I have also found myself really heavily moving towards meditation um, and creating lots of my own kind of meditation practices um, yeah and I just feel that there it's a world that is so full and nourishing and there's so much to learn it's like it, yeah a constant learning and a constant journey yeah and it's always teaching us about ourselves and how much choice we actually do have in our lives and in the world i think a lot of people um we forget that we have so much agency of choice in life because we get caught up you know in social constructs and all the fun stuff that goes and you know the child childhoods and all that all, everything that comes up that shapes us you know as adults but we we have so much choice in, in yoga and that awareness that we get in meditation teaches that too. Like, I mean, to, to know that you are limitless and endless and you can take a moment to just pause and tune in, like that's worth, I don't know how much money in the world. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know, tell me about it. And and yeah, and also empowerment. And as you said, I, I, I realized during my training how disempowered I'd felt in so much of my life and how I'd been mm-hmm. in this kind of rat race of life. But, and I, you know, I thought I was doing what I really loved, but even as an actor, you are always waiting for somebody else's approval um, to get you the job. And then you get on the job and you, of course, you get your say as an actor when you're in this, when you're kind of working on set. But there's a lot of the time you're doing what other people tell you to do. And I suddenly yeah. realized how disempowered I'd really felt. And I wasn't really trusting my voice before I'd found yoga and meditation. And let alone standing in front of big groups, if I had a script or a character, put me in front of a million people and I was happy but as myself to do that I was like I don't know what I would say and I came from yeah. I come from a family of academics um who were pretty much on the genius um, scale and it, then I was this kind of performer who I was I was always hiding behind these people because it meant that and more didn't have to be revealed um uh, yeah and then yeah. yeah and then I found yoga and I had teachers that just for encouraging me to speak from my heart and it and to share like the most vulnerable and I was like is that possible like can we really experience that level of comfort just speaking and owning every word that you say and not not having to memorize things and just knowing that like you just turning up is enough um and it blew my mind into this whole I mean I just want everyone to experience that that they are enough and every word they say has a space and a place to be heard and said. Yeah. Well said. I mean, well said. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the goal anyway. I think we did, but we can, I mean, you know, as a teacher, we can say this until our faces turn blue and people have to just, we were talking about this just before we started recording, but people don't know until they know, Mm. you know, and they don't know until they go through it and they, you know, they have to have their own experience of it 
versus us being like, this is the way to go. This is the way to go. We can guide them there and give them, you know, all the insight that we have, but eventually, you know, they've got to get through their own process in order for them to, to get there. Yeah. Because it's scary, right? Like it's, it's you, although it's, it's once you've done it and you feel that that sense of like being held in a space by people that have also done it and you realize that there is so much, um, oneness I don't know that sounds yeah. a little bit like out there but like you know there's so we're all the same underneath it all so when you kind of feel that and you sense it it doesn't feel scary anymore but to take that first step just to say the first heartfelt thing or the first vulnerable thing and especially out loud in a group is really scary so I get it that like people don't want to do it straight away but it um yeah I just want to keep holding the space for people until they feel ready because um yeah my experience of it has been um, a total life-changing turnaround where I feel um, confident in a not arrogant way. Just I'm okay with myself in a not perfect way. Yeah, that's it. And also it's like, it reminds us that we have personal responsibility and that's scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is. What are you up to now with all of your yoga now that you're, you know, you're, it sounds like you're moving and grooving with it. I like that moving and grooving. Um, I have had an amazing, amazing two years. I feel very um, fortunate. And I think you said earlier that, you know, you, uh, you started it and then you realized this was kind of your life's work. And yeah. I feel that I was very fortunate that I came from an acting career that I had a bit of a platform um, mm -hmm. when I kind of started out in yoga. And um, I realized that I could get in front of kind of larger crowds. And so I really wanted to try and make as much kind of impact as I could. And I also realized that lots of my crowd was online. Mm. Um, so I started, um, I mean, I did lots of classes in London, um, but I started doing lots of um, online stuff, sharing stuff on my kind of social media, trying to use social media for positive rather than um, negative effect. Um, and I started my company Energy Rise, which um, I'm so proud of, but it's basically um, a hub where I believe that all of us are so different and unique that not mm -hmm. one mindfulness practice is going to fit for all of us. Some people need a physical practice um, and a strong physical practice. Some people need a, a seated meditation. Um, other people need a movement meditation and other people just want to breathe. And I wanted to have something that some uh, that people could come to. They could try everything and understand what kind of mindfulness is, rather than having to go to a yoga studio, a meditation studio, a breathwork place, and and try like one class every month. It's like just come try and understand what mindfulness is, and then you can from there find out what's going to work for your unique needs. Um, mm. Yeah, so that that was kind of my now my mission is that you, there is a path into mindfulness for everybody. I believe everyone should be doing it, even if it's just awareness of breath. Um, there's yeah that there is a place for people to discover that like what is right for them. So wait, meditation isn't one size fits all. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's how not, you how, yeah i know right we all it's just like like any other yoga pose you know what i mean people try to squeeze one simple thing into their body and make a shape work for every single person out there and it's just not the way it works we find a way that makes it or you know we customize it for for what you're working with and what you've got and you're absolutely right some days seated meditation is great and then other days you need more than seated meditation you need to move or you need to connect or you need to be out in nature whatever it is that that you need to do it's yeah. totally different sometimes it's on a case-by-case -case basis too definitely I think it goes through like how you're feeling emotionally day by day and sometimes I mean I that's um another reason why I'm, I'm glad that I've kind of got different mindfulness practices behind me now it's that if I wake up and I you know I have energy and emotion to shift through me I know that I need to physically move my body um and other days where I'm feeling like my mind is chattering and it's too much and I'm feeling kind of any stress and anxiety I know that I kind of need to sit and be still so it's kind of just listening knowing how to listen to your body and what it needs and um, and I've also created a movement meditation which um is one of my favorite practices to teach um which combines 
I guess everything, but it's about connecting back to your intuition in a way that we used to do before the age of two. And we used to express ourselves through movement all the time. And then as we get older, we compare ourselves to everybody around us. Um, and by the time we get to our adult life, we often barely move. We especially mm -hmm. not in kind of a free flow way because we become so conscious of comparing ourselves to other people. Um, right. And so the movement meditation that I've created is to a soundtrack and I guide people through the elements and then just encourage people often with blindfolds. So it's a very like introverted experience um, mm. that they can just move to whatever the body wants to do to the music. And um, it's, I think, a beautiful way to um, combine all different practices and, and really reconnect to yourself. Is that something that's done in like a, like a private one-on-one -on -one setting or is it like group setting with everyone doing that like movement kind of tune in meditation? I do both. So I often teach it in big groups. Um, I actually love teaching both ways, but um, big groups is amazing because you get the group energy. Um, but often if I'm in big groups, I love to have people either blindfolded or closing their eyes so that they just feel safe in their own space. So it's, and again, taking that level of comparison away. Um, so that they feel safe to explore themselves in maybe ways that they haven't since they were young. Mm, yeah. I like that. I think like, it, like what you said is like coming back to, oh, to that innocence of being a kid mm. where you would just like, didn't matter where you were, who was around, you'd strip down half the time you're running around naked and just running around and dancing, acting a fool or wherever it was. <laughs> totally, like that blissful, like innocence where, yeah, you just, you don't care what people think and you don't you try, you're not trying to impress anybody you're, or even yourself. You're just being that like it's the kind of dream isn't it with all practices like how do you get back to that level of just pure comfort I think within yourself what do you see the changes in people when they work through something like that or go through it I'm sure it's got to be cool to see uh, you see probably some really cool transformation happen from it I, I would only assume yeah I do and I it, lots of different things a couple of things that kind of come up often is people can get really emotional because they realize how disconnected they are from their body. And, and often in a first practice, there'll be people that feel like they can't move at all because they're so not used to trusting themselves. Um, mm. And so although the practice hasn't been what they maybe would have would have expected which was for them to actually get into this kind of flowing movement it was a huge realization and for somebody to realize that about themselves is huge you know that they haven't been listening to their bodies and it gives them an opportunity to I mean come back work through it but also for them to start just finding different ways to actually reconnect to themselves so that's one thing that's amazing to to witness when somebody has a huge realization like that um, mm -hmm. and then the opposite where somebody just flips deep into meditation and just allows their body just to go into this complete free movement and they come out and they don't remember what happened or what they did. They just feel this sense of deep connection with themselves and an ability to kind of express. And often it becomes a really em emotional experience for them because they haven't allowed that for so long. So giving people the opportunity to um, step into that unknown place, I think. Yeah. I love watching. Mm. I love watching people do do these things where they step into something they yeah they never do and trust in the process enough to allow an experience to happen. When you look back at some of the practices that you originally did, like when you were being introduced to all this, what were some of the biggest ones that impacted you? And how did you see them like change you? There's some things that I've done, like, uh, like for instance, like my morning sadhana practice after doing certain like pranayama techniques where I knew within like days that it was, that I was immediately different. Mm -hmm. Um, breath work. Um, I actually spent after training, I actually spent some time in, um, LA and I was with a good friend of mine there and we went to loads of different, um, classes and I went to, um, some pretty deep breath work sessions. Um, and I had like out of body experiences. I just, all the stuff that I wasn't aware that just the breath changing your breath. So it's you, your own body doing it to itself. Like there's nothing, not taking anything. You're not having to do much or lying on the floor and all you do is change your breath pattern and then mystical experiences can happen. Um, yeah. So that for me was um, pretty impactful. Um, and energy work as well. Um, I'm trained in a particularly energy, uh, energy healing modality that uh, when I first experienced it again, changed my whole course. Uh, it's called theta healing. And uh, mm -hmm. so you kind of in the theta brainwave um, and 
that for me was the really deep but gentle process where you can shift huge things in your life instantly. Um, and I guess my life's never been the same because I've managed to heal myself of physical things and emotional things um, pretty instantly, which is, I guess, in my old version of myself would have thought wasn't possible and would have been like magic, but it's magic seems to be kind of real in my life. <laughs> <laughs> totally, for sure. Are you kidding? Absolutely. Ma I mean, magic is just another way to say science, you know, and science is another way to say magic. We just look at it in different lights. A hundred percent. And also how exciting that we're living in a time where science is proving all of it. So it's not what used to be seen as, as crazy and woo woo is, is actually now science, as you said, there, you know, Joe Dispenza, uh, my friend, Joe yeah. Harrell, I don't know if um, you've heard of him in LA. Um, he's amazing. And he's doing, you know, they're both doing th the science to prove exactly what they're doing energetically. And uh, that's amazing. I think it's going to change the course of how we live, I think, from this point in. I think the stuff that Joe Dispenza is doing with the quantum field is like completely mind blowing and also really cool to conceptualize what it is that I'm feeling or where it is that I'm going or what's happening when I go into deep meditation like that. Yeah, it's amazing. And I think what the Western world needs is science, right? In a way that lots of other countries have still have lots of faith and religion. And, and so they find the mystical stuff quite easy to believe in a way um obviously i'm generalizing um but i think uh, especially in london where there's not there's lots of different religions here but there's not kind of religion isn't necessarily the primary belief system here actually science is and it's become um something that people feel that they need in order to experience things and so now that science is backing it up people are not afraid to try things that i think they wouldn't have before um so yeah, I think what Joe's doing is incredible. That's amazing. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing not only one, your story, but also what you're doing with, you're taking your practice so much further and helping so many other people um, find that same sweetness that me and you get to experience on the daily. Well, thank you for having me. It's always um, a pleasure to share. And um, yeah, I have lots of, I'm trying to, I mean, obviously right now it's a, it's a, time where we can't physically all be together but keeping community going and sharing as much as um as i can so energy rise is still um energyrise.co.uk i'm going to keep putting content out there for people to kind of stay connected um and lots of retreats that will be coming up as well it's definitely super important right now more than ever that we have a lot more meditators and a lot more yogis because <laughs> things are weird in the world <laughs> just crazy it's really i mean bizarre i kind of even can't even begin to imagine what's really happening but in some and a higher from a higher perspective i do believe that the world needs everybody to take a break and i feel like this time although it's really scary and uncertain and unsettling it can be a really be beautiful time where we can actually all retreat and look inwards and and everybody realize what's really important to us and and it, for me, it's like all the people that are just really close to me and suddenly all of my connections with people have got really strong and so there's kind of in the fear of it all, there's some kind of beauty that's coming out of it. I feel like Mother Nature just basically said, everyone go to your room and think about what you've done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, until the next Yogi Misfit Sessions, this is Danny and Maud saying peace out. Peace out. Peace out.